Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about one of the best vampire horror movies ever made, Let the Right One In. This is one of those rare vampire movies that received universal acclaim, a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes, you don't see that every day. And the man himself, Roger Ebert, proclaimed it the best modern vampire movie. If that's not a high praise, I don't know what is. Rest in peace to Roger Ebert. Let the Right One In is a Swedish romantic horror film that came out in 2008 and was directed by Tomas Alfredsson. It stars Corey Hedebrandt as Oscar and Lena Lee Anderson as Ellie. The movie is based on the book of the same name that came out in 2004 written by Jean I. Vidalinkvist. He also wrote the screenplay for the film, which is probably why it turned out so good, similar to when Anne Rice, author of The Vampire Chronicles, wrote the screenplay for Interview with the Vampire. Apparently authors are very good at writing screenplays. The budget for Let the Right One In was around $4 million, and it brought in roughly $11.2 million at the box office. The movie was well received though and it actually received a US remake in 2010 called Let Me In. If there's any other movies or TV shows you want me to cover, please leave them in the comments below. We're going to be taking a look at how a 200 year old vampire survives being trapped in the body of a 12 year old in Blackburg, Sweden. When the movie starts, we are introduced to a young boy named Oscar. He gets bullied by the kids at school and doesn't seem to have any friends. He lives with his mother and his father is an alcoholic. He fantasizes about killing the kids that bully him, playing out the scenarios for fun with a knife. He also has a fascination with murders. He cuts out gruesome crimes from the paper and collects them in a morbid book that he made. One night, Oscar goes outside to play one of his fantasies of murdering his classmates and a mysterious girl appears behind him. She quickly leaves and tells Oscar they can't be friends, but she appears again and again, and slowly her and Oscar become friends, and eventually, more than friends. Ellie is a vampire, over 200 years old, but stuck in the body of a 12 year old. As she says, I'm 12, but I've been 12 for a long time. They never mention how Ellie became a vampire in the movie because they were trying to focus more on the relationship between Oscar and Ellie. In the film, Oscar tells Ellie, I like you, and she replies, would you still like me if I wasn't a girl? And I thought she was referring to being a vampire. But I learned in the book that Ellie's name was originally Elias, and he's a boy. A vampire nobleman turned Elias into a vampire and removed his genitals. Elias now goes by Ellie, wears girl clothes, and basically lives as a female. There is a scene in the movie when Oscar tries to spy on Ellie while she's getting changed and it shows a bizarre partial frontal nude shot. I was shocked and confused so I had to look up what was the deal with this shot. It turns out the point was not to show Ellie's genitals, but lack thereof, which explains why Oscar seemed so shocked and ran away. To make Ellie seem more mature for her age and the gender more ambiguous, they had an older actor do Ellie's voice dubs. Ellie. It is strange why a 200 year old vampire would be interested in a 12 year old Oscar, but maybe because she is stuck at the biological age of 12, her brain cannot develop anymore. So even though she is over 200 and pretty intelligent, she still only has the brain development and maturity of a child. Ellie must consume blood to survive. It seems like she can go a few days without blood before she starts to become hungry. If she sees blood, like when Oscar cut his hand, Ellie has a hard time controlling herself and has to run away to stop herself from harming Oscar. This could also be a factor of her young age. An older vampire might possibly be able to control themselves. When she first meets Oscar, he makes a comment that she smells funny. Later, Ellie feeds on someone and the next time when talking to Oscar, asks if she still smells. Some people think that because Ellie hadn't fed in a while, that possibly she smelt of decay. Since vampires need blood and the life within it, having no blood causes them to start to die. Later, when Ellie fed on someone, it presumably made the smell go away because Oscar didn't say anything. But others think that she decided to bathe because she liked Oscar and that's why she smelled better. Hakan even made a comment to Ellie asking her why is she bathing all of a sudden. While I do think that's possible, I think it was the fact that she hadn't fed on blood. How does someone else become a vampire? 
Well, you must be bitten or have an exchange of blood somehow. If Ellie bites someone and they die, they won't become a vampire. They must live to become a vampire. If the person Ellie bit survives, like Virginia, then they will fully turn within 24 hours. When Virginia woke up the next day, she was already burned by sunlight. Ellie needs to feed, but doesn't always get her own blood because it's dangerous. And if she's seen feeding, that could also be very bad. Ellie lives with Hakan. Strangers think he's Ellie's father, but he is actually her familiar. He used to be a teacher, but he lost his job because it was discovered that he was a pedophile. Ellie met him while he was homeless on the street and helped him. Hakan became her familiar, protecting her and helping her get blood by murdering people, draining their blood, and getting rid of the bodies. However, he was not so good at this, and it angered Ellie. He fell in love with Ellie, but she never felt the same way. Eventually, he gave her a choice. Love him, or he won't get her blood anymore. Which led her to going out on her own, and viciously attacking a man under a bridge. Hakan always carries a jar of acid on him. In case he ever gets caught, he can disfigure himself, so he will be unrecognizable, and nothing can be traced back to Ellie. Eventually, Hakan gets into a tough situation and he has no choice but to pour the acid on himself, leaving him horribly disfigured. Ellie visits him in the hospital and feeds on him and lets him fall to his death. Such a visceral scene. In the book, Ellie is interrupted while feeding on Hakan, which still leads to him falling out the window, but instead of dying, he came back zombified and searching for Ellie. A vampire needs a familiar not only to help them get blood, but to protect them during the day when they are vulnerable. Some argue that Ellie might not truly love Oscar, but might be simply grooming him to be her next familiar. Through the movie, she encourages him to kill by saying things like, Be like me a little. And the first time Ellie met Oscar, he was playing out a fantasy of killing his school bullies, and it didn't seem to phase her at all. Personally, I just think they're two broken people that make a whole, as scary as they might be. Ellie is over 200 years old and still appears as a small child, so I think it's safe to say these vampires are truly immortal. Usually Ellie appears as a normal child, but when enraged or stimulated by blood, her eyes change and her skin appears more gray. These vampires are cold to the touch, at least according to Oscar, and they are not affected by the weather. It's winter in Sweden and Ellie is often wearing no winter clothes, and if they can't produce body heat, then they probably don't have a heartbeat. Ellie sleeps in the bathtub during the day with blankets over. This might serve the same function as a coffin. These vampires also hibernate for long periods of time. If a vampire lives for 500 years, they will be asleep for roughly half that time. <laughs> Ellie has much greater strength and speed than a human, and can climb and scale walls like Spider-Man, as well as fly. She is never fully seen while flying, so it's not clear if she grows some kind of wings or just floats like the Lost Boys. Either way, her flight ability is quite strong, as she was able to carry someone and drag them through the water while flying. Like most vampires, Ellie also has enhanced senses like hearing and scent, able to easily smell blood from a far distance. When Ellie smells or sees blood, it causes her fangs to come out. These vampires have two fangs on their top row of teeth, and they are usually not visible at all until they feed. As far as supernatural or magic-like abilities, Ellie can hypnotize people, like compulsion, and can also transfer memories via touch. In the novel, Ellie does this to show Oscar how she was turned. Ellie has an egg full of jewelry. She says if you sold that egg, you could buy a nuclear power plant. Oscar asks if she stole it, but Ellie says, no, people gave it to me. Ellie could steal these things, obviously, but probably uses her ability of compulsion to just make people give her these things. This is how she can afford a place to live for her and Hakan, even though he didn't have a job. You can see this ability on display a bit when Ellie walks into the hospital. A woman behind the counter seems a little shocked Ellie is alone, but can't help but answer all of her questions. In the book, it mentions that the woman felt compelled to give her something, but she didn't know why. Now let's take a look at how you can kill these vampires. Mm -hmm. 
Vampires from Let the Right One In can be killed with fire, a stake through the heart, and of course decapitation and sunlight. UV rays from the sun will burn a vampire's skin, but even just a few seconds of exposure will cause a vampire to burst into flames. These vampires are not shown being weak to any kind of silver or holy objects. However, they must be invited into a home to enter. Ellie tells Oscar, you must invite me in. And he says, what happens if you come in? But Ellie doesn't move. Oscar beckons her in non-verbally, but when she enters, she begins to shake and then begins to bleed out of her scalp, eyes, ears, nose, pretty much everywhere. Oscar panics and starts yelling, you can come in, and the bleeding stops. So Oscar kind of nodding his head for her to come in was not enough. He had to say aloud, you can come in. Vampires also need an invitation for different entrances. If you invite a vampire in your front door, they will still not be able to enter through any other door or window. Ellie was invited into Oscar's house, but she needed to be invited again in order to get through his window. Something else I would consider a weakness is the vampire's need or reliance on a familiar. Vampires, or at least Ellie, need a familiar to get them blood when they're too weak to hunt and to protect them. Vampires are very vulnerable when they rest during the day. When Ellie was sleeping, a man almost came in and killed her. Lucky that Oscar was there. Without a familiar, a vampire probably would not survive long. Vampires might also need a familiar to get blood when they are trying to lay low. Vampires cannot consume regular food at all, only blood. Oscar gives Ellie some food to try, and shortly after she has to go behind the building and get sick. I think she did this to show Oscar she can't eat regular food. I'm not sure if this would be considered a weakness, but cats. Virginia is accidentally turned into a vampire by Ellie, and the next day when she enters her friend's home, the cats start to hiss, and then all of the cats begin to attack her, even following her down the hallway and causing her to fall down the stairs. Many stories involving vampires or evil make use of cats. Like Keanu Reeves said, they're half in, half out. Egyptians thought cats had a connection to the mortal realm and the underworld. Some old Egyptian lore said the cats guarded the underworld and stopped souls from escaping. They could also send evil souls that do not belong in the mortal realm back to the underworld. Since vampires are undead, cats might see them as something that doesn't belong in our world. One of the best known Egyptian gods is Bastet. Appearing as a woman with a cat head, she is seen as a goddess of many things, but among them, a protector against disease and evil spirits. Since cats attacked Virginia, it makes me wonder where the origins of this vampirism comes from and if it's rooted in evil. The writer of Let the Right One In also wrote a book called Let the Old Dreams Die that was published in 2005. It's a collection of short stories that includes an epilogue to Let the Right One In. The story follows the man who punched Oscar's ticket at the end of the movie to board the train and his girlfriend. That's my video on Let the Right One In, by far one of the most unique vampire movies I've ever seen, and one of the best. Similar to 30 Days of Night, this movie does not glamorize being a vampire. It's dark. If you haven't seen it, definitely watch it. But it's a Swedish film, so you'll have to watch with subtitles. If that's not your cup of tea, there is an English remake that people also said was great, so you could watch that. I recently did a poll of what video game series I should cover, since I've never covered a video game before, and Vampire the Masquerade won. So expect a video on that eventually. I've had a lot of requests and heard nothing but praise for Legacy of Kane, so I'll definitely be covering that game too. As always, if there's any movies or TV shows you'd like me to cover, please let me know. I've seen some of you suggesting the new anime, Vampires in the Garden. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, and maybe subscribe if you haven't. I really appreciate it. You can hit the bell to be notified anytime I upload if you want. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.